Hi, it's Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I want to show you a new navigation tool that's available, and of course it's found in the navigation tools over here, and it's called the Panel Menu. So this is a very efficient way to make navigation for your website. I'm going to click on the Panel Menu tool and simply draw a box, and you can see all it is is it's a single button. It's a button that I can, of course, design to look the way I want it to look and say what I want it to say. But before I do that, I'm going to show you what it does by default, meaning I'm not going to make any changes to it right now. I want you to see the effect that the panel menu creates. So I'm clicking F5 so that we can preview this website. And what happens is this button, this menu, actually functions this way. When I hover over it and click, it brings up a menu. It's called a panel menu, and you can see that it just came in from the side here. This is basically a navigation menu that I can edit and make look the way I want it to. I can dismiss this menu by simply clicking the panel menu again, and it goes away. It's actually a great way to save space, or what they call real estate, on your website if you want to. And it'd be especially handy if you had a really huge menu. So if you wanted to have a menu with a number of categories or links here, you'd have a lot more space in this vertical space because most people's browsers are going to be tall enough or high enough to accommodate a number of links. So that would be a great use of the panel menu. Of course, you can make it look like however you want. So let's go do that. I'm going to close it. And in fact, I'll close this preview and we'll go back to the design mode and let's double click on this and bring up the panel menu attributes. Here, of course, is the menu. We'll want to change that to suit and it works just like anything else. You select an item, you click edit and make it say what you want it to say. Link it to wherever you want it to link. I'm going to leave that alone because that should be pretty obvious. Making links is easy. You can remove these, you can add new ones and make them say what you want and link the way you want to. Under options, that's where we can decide what the actual starting button looks like. So that's where it says panel menu. You would change this here to say whatever you want. You can even put some instructions here. You could say click here or whatever you want to say to open the panel menu. You can even put an icon within this menu if you want to. You want to be mindful of the size of that icon. And so if you have something that would fit, and, you, and again, you can change the size of this button. So if you have an icon that's, say, 32 by 32, you might want to make this button be about 40 pixels high or something like that to accommodate that button. But I would do that by browsing my system for an image. I'm not going to do that. But if I did, I could choose where that icon appears left, right, top, bottom, and how offset it is from the edge of the button. The other thing I can do is I can decide how this panel button behaves when it's clicked on. Right now we just saw it push, and I'm going to change that to overlay here in just a minute, but let me show you what that looks like. Also we made it dismissible, which means the user can toggle it back close. So let's look and see what push does again. So I'm going to go F5, and we're going to click on the panel menu, and you can see what it did was when the menu appeared, it pushed the whole website over. Watch, I'll do it again. Watch the words of the snowball factor, and you'll see what I mean. You see how it pushes it all the way over to make room for the panel menu. Well, you don't have to do that. One of the other effects you may choose to do, and it may be more efficient, is to choose the overlay appearance. So let's click OK and preview this. Watch what happens. This time, when I press Panel Menu, you'll see that it comes in, but it doesn't push anything out of the way. It just goes on top of the website. Now, this is important to know because you can see how it covered my words here. If I was going to do this, I'd probably want to move these so that this looks better. So I might want to move my wording over so when this does overlay, it doesn't cut off anything. Just kind of a design decision, but the point is you have the flexibility to make that either overlay or push things out of the way. And it's really a nice way to save space. So under the options is where we would make those decisions where whether it's dismissible or not. Also, the position we've been working with is to the left side of the screen. It can come in on the other side if you want. I think left is more common for people, but a lot of people are right-handed. And so if you wanted to put it on the right side of the screen, there's nothing wrong with that. How it comes in is controllable. Right now it's sliding. I could actually have it just appear meaning there will be no animation, but I really like the slide, and I can control how fast that happens. Right now it's set at 200 milliseconds. So you can change that by changing these numbers. This is a very subtle change in the way it slides. Some of this you won't even notice to the naked eye sometimes, but you can make it sort of bounce in or bounce out. So if you wanted to do kind of a little bit more uh, animation, you could change that. I'll show you what that looks like. 
And some of these are very subtle, but you see it sort of bounced in really quick. That was very fast, so you'd have to slow it down if you really wanted to see it. But you can see that it does kind of animate a little differently. Again, very subtle changes, and you can play with those. Now the way it looks is under the style. This is important to notice. Right now it defaults at sort of this dark charcoal gray, and it's using a gradient mode. It doesn't have to. It can be just a solid color or multi-gradient. But what is important to know is whatever the style is, is also going to be the style of the menu itself. So this isn't just the button. The button always matches the menu. If you change the style of the fonts to something else, which you could do here, their color, their hover, their size, their mode, all of that. If you wanted a border, all of this is done here. So for example, let's just do that. Let's make it be a solid button. And in fact, let's make it match my existing buttons here. So I'll make the color be this orange. By the way, one way to get an existing color is to click on more colors and bring up the color picker and just it's a dropper. I'm going to click that orange here and select that from my page and click OK. Bring this back into the camera so you can see. Click OK. And see, I just changed this to match. Uh, the only difference is I didn't change the border. These don't have a border. and This has a border. So I'd want to change that as well under style. And I might want to change my hover color. Uh, let's make the border be nothing so there isn't one. And here's what I'm trying to say. When I test this, I'm going to click F5 you'll see that, and again, there's the hover I didn't change, right? You'll see that the menu comes out and matches. So that's very important to know. So what you're styling this button to, you're styling the actual panel menu for because they do match. So anyway, that's just another great way to make navigation for your 90 second website builder website and a great way to save space if you're working with a really large menu, especially something that can be seen vertically like this one is. So enjoy the panel menu tool in 90 Second Website Builder.